Okay, take it away, Bernie. Okay, so we had Michael Stone with activity, activities as building blocks. Thank you, Michael. Michael is out of the field. I think you should. I'll let. Uh, I'm Michael. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're all doing here with these activities. Uh, this is joint work of sort with Cynthia from the OLPC learning team, with Brian Jordan, the same, and a little bit with Chris and Eric, and probably some other contributors who I've forgotten. My apologies to them in advance. Um, also, I only intend to give a short introduction to my thoughts on the subject because I don't have very many of them yet, and they're very well developed. Instead, I hope that I will present us with a compelling description of a challenging problem, and we'll think about it for a little while and see what occurs. So, I understand the purpose of sugar to be a vehicle for conveying an educational experience. And it's supposed to be a rewarding educational experience. We hope in the long run, the most rewarding educational experience provided in aggregate on the whole planet. That's a tall order, though. So we might try to break that large problem down into smaller ones. And the idea of activities has been, for me, a powerful step in that direction. Now, a caveat here, there is disagreement about the, the, the validity and usefulness of the term activity. I'm one of the people who was inspired by it, who finds the intentional ambiguity that it represents uh, stimulating mental uh, handhold with which to grasp the problem of providing an educational experience. So what is an activity? This is a question that I asked when I first arrived at OLPC many months ago. And the answer that I found was essentially that it was a, a pun on four different aspects of the human experience. The first of these is the division of chunks of time into the phrase, I am acting, I am writing, I am reading, I am speaking, I am presenting. These are all human activities that we do. The second was the idea that there could be software inspired by that human activity and named, named after it. Um, it's a, 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 mim a mimetic idea. The software should resemble the activity and should assist with carrying it out. Next, there was the notion that activities are things which I participate in in sure. sessions. That I start them, I carry them out for a while, I stop them, and also the idea that activities are often shared. Uh, that they're things that multiple people participate in at once, and sometimes they're even things that people who don't know each other participate in at large scales. So all of these circumstances of the use of the English word activity in everyday life reflect and inspire aspects of the kind of learning experience that Sugar wants to provide. That's where the word comes from, in my opinion. That's why I find it valuable to hang on to. Next, uh, though, we might inspect the software which is available in Sugar today for using the activities. And that software, in my opinion, is rudimentary. And there are two fashions in which it's rudimentary. First, the process of recognizing a humanly meaningful activity and creating a software reification of it is uh, painstaking, brutal, fraught, and uh, challenging to, to distribute so far. After a year and a half working in this project, which has delivered software to 500,000 people, we have something like 100, 150 activities. The second and part was the drone that. What's the problem with that? Sure. What does it mean? What it means is that the ability to convert human experiences that the people having those experiences would call activities into the software things that share those experiences or that embody them is a process with a low success rate. Well, well, let's, let's talk about I mean, 
So Mark, Marco said that he feels that 150 activities is a, is a perfectly fine number, and that his larger concern uh, is for the maintainability of that software over the long run. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, I would enjoy revisiting this issue in more detail in a few minutes after I state the fundamental question that I want us to consider. The fundamental question that I want us to consider is that um, it's very clear to me that the learning experiences that I've engaged in, which have been most profound for me, and which have most shaped, uh, in some sense, my ability to stand up here and talk about what an activity is, were compound experiences. Uh, they were composed of many smaller things that I call human activities, pieced together, often under the direction of some person who already walked down that approximate path before, um, who knew what the terrain ahead looked like, and who wanted to share an experience with me, or wanted to inspire and wanted to offer me the opportunity to have a kind of experience that they thought would benefit me. Um, and <clears throat> I think that we could do a much better job at enabling people to share their experiences through our computer with, with other people en masse. And I want to give three concrete examples of how I think that could be done, things that I wish I knew how to do smoothly or slickly or um, in, in some sense effectively uh, with the laptop software. And then I, I will, I'll be finished with my part of the talk and we should go on and think harder about uh, the extent to which we are satisfied or dissatisfied with the activity paradigm and its implementation to date. Uh, Marco's maintainability concerns fit right into that. So, my first example concerns the idea of going on a hike. Um, it's it's a, a well-known experience, uh, particularly in America, with old educational roots, that I'm going to wander out into something a little bit like the wilderness and look around. I'm going to record my experiences as I go, perhaps in writing a journal, perhaps in, through photography, perhaps by taking samples. Uh, I expect to encounter several scenic areas which will be worthy of recording. I have some destination that I'm trying to reach in many cases, the top of a mountain or a lake, for example. And when I get there, uh, there may be some special action that I take. I might take a water sample from the lake. I might make uh, a, a measurement of the, the atmospheric quality at the top of the mountain. And then I might return from my journey and collate my results, collect them with those of other people who went on similar hikes to other nearby mountains, and thereby achieve a more comprehensive picture of the world than I'm capable of forming myself. What happened to the picnic? <laughs> yes, can't forget the picnic. So this is an experience which I'm able to articulate, I think fairly clearly for all of you here. Many of you have been on similar experiences, and I'm able to inspire you in images of what that experience is like and of some of the things that you might learn. Um, another key property of this experience is that it's an open-ended one. Um, it, it, there's lots of opportunity for individual imagination to strike at moments on this hike and for you to become interested in bird watching or in geology uh, as you go along, along with this experience. So, it's also an experience which is quite amenable to the inclusion of small, low-cost, lightweight, low-power laptops with sunlight-readable displays and wireless networking. Um, each of the tasks that I mentioned, for me, has some relatively straightforward manifestation that I would say, yes, the laptop was helping me to record. Yeah, I made a better recording because I had the laptop. I was better able to analyze the samples that I took back with the sensors of the laptop. I was better able to perform an analysis of the results, or to share, or simply to share those results with other people who collected them and record them over time, than I was able to do without the laptop. Uh, how do I? So my question is, how do I share this experience through the laptop or without it, but using the laptop with other people? This is the first sort of example. We can either stop and talk about it for a little while now, or I can relate the other two examples, and then we can uh, go through them together. People have any strong preference? Just going 